From the American College of Financial Services, it's time for Next Gen in 10. I'm Ross Riskin, chair of the Next Gen Advisory Task Force, and for the next 10 minutes, you'll be joined by our hosts and guests discussing topics relevant to up and coming financial advisors. Hey, Next Gen, it's Alana Phillips here today with Kathleen Burns Kingsbury. She's a wealth psychology expert author and coach. Thanks for continuing to hang out with us today, Kathleen. Thank you, Alana. I'm having a lot of fun breaking money silence with you. Me too. I never like to be silent. So I'm all about this conversation and specifically today, you know, talking a little bit more about women, you know, women as clients, women advisors. Can you talk a little bit about some of the specific work that you are helping women with and I know you have this negotiation piece that tends to be harder for women. So give us a little color on that. So when I wrote my book, Breaking Money Silence, I didn't really focus too much specifically on gender. And what I realized is that when I started to present and talk about this, that in some ways that was great, but there was also this missing piece. Because I think for women, breaking money silence can be a little bit more complicated. You know, I'm not saying it's not complicated for men, but when you actually look at the statistics, it's something like 61% of women would rather talk about their own death than talk about money. And that is significantly higher than with the general population where it's about 44%. And so then I started to think about, well, what are the conversations that, you know, I struggle with, that my colleagues who are females struggle with, and that in general, I think are really hard. And that's where negotiation came to play. I, as an entrepreneur of over 20 years, have had to figure out how to negotiate, how to work with my own mindset around asking and getting paid my worth, and have a history, I'm happy to say it's in my history, but a history of being a classic under earner. So that's when I really decided for 2021, I was going to zone in on the psychology of negotiation and specifically to women, because I think it is one area that's so hard to break money silence on. Yeah, it is so interesting. I think about Kathleen, we have a, a project I've been working on called Project Inspire. We go into colleges and we talk to young women about careers in financial services and, and do some financial literacy. But one of the topics is salary negotiation. So we've done a presentation on this and you know, all the women in the room had great feedback, but the professor who had invited us to do this was a woman. And she said, Alana, I wish that I had had somebody say these things to me two weeks ago when I had to go in and talk about wow. my salary for this year. And I thought we came to talk to these young women about it, but here's this tenured professor who would have wanted to have those tools as well. So it's, it doesn't seem like it's a generational issue. It really is. There's something specific that makes this harder for women. Well, and I think it has to do with the fact that there's so many double messages to women, right? There's a, you should be profit motivated, but don't be too profit motivated. You know, you should really be financially fit, but you know, it's not that sexy if you're financially fit. Like you want to be a little stupid in order to find a partner, which is horrible, but that's kind of the messages that we get. And even, no, I would love to say that millennials and Gen Z, oh, they're over it. It is not the case that these, unfortunately, these messages are in the fabric of our society. They are shifting and changing. And I'm really excited because I didn't have a, a seminar like that. And I would have loved that. And what I'm finding is the more I'm engaging in conversations with women of all ages around negotiation, it's really about talking about it openly and honestly, and then being able to support each other. And that's the tricky part, right? I think sometimes it's really hard to support each other as women in asking and getting paid what we're worth. Yeah, it's interesting, Kathleen, when you say that don't be too profit motivated. I have historically been in roles that maybe there's a commissions or bonuses that were available and have driven to hit those. And it's an exciting, joyful thing that happens, right? When you can earn more money. And you know, you talk a lot about that female breadwinner I identify with very much, but I've never wanted to share that with anybody, right? And why is that that we're not, we don't feel comfortable sharing even when it's something really exciting and good about money that we've accomplished. I think there's something about women being happy for each other and being almost too competitive. Now that sounds interesting. So let me explain. So if you go back way back when, when you had primitive times, right? We're all sitting around the campfire. Our men are off hunting and really 
the only way you could get a husband or a partner who could quote unquote protect you was to be subservient, was to make sure that you were able to compete and get his attention. And so how does that relate now? Well, I think we learned how to befriend each other, have relationships, but not have each other's back. Now move forward. And that plays out in lots of different ways. I think it plays out around money a lot because I know for me, female breadwinner, I've had a similar experience where you're really excited. You really want to talk about money and the fact that, oh, I'm making the most I've ever made, but you want to be really careful for some reason who you engage in that conversation with, because I think there's a lot of jealousy. And I think we're not socialized in general as women to be competitive. So it's often easier to talk to men about it, but I have found a group of women that I have broke money silence with that are in a similar profession, and maybe you could do the same for yourself. And so we can widen our circle and look for women who are able to do that. But I think it is complicated and maybe it's complicated for men in the same way, but I have a sense that it isn't. It is an interesting conundrum. I know some of the women that I associate with WIFS, which is Women in Insurance and Financial Services, we have formed a group talking about how do you make money like a woman? And we almost have to change, right? We don't want to talk about, oh, I'm the top producer or I made X dollars. We want to change how we talk about those things to get back to the beginning of our conversation. Do we think that it's a language shift? Does changing the language make it easier for women to talk about how they make money with each other? Like, how do we fix that amongst other women? Well, I love that that group exists. I didn't know about that. So part of it is there's unconscious and conscious gender bias in our society. And just because you're a woman doesn't mean you don't have it. And so a man who is bragging about how much he makes is often seen as a great provider. And a woman is seen as a witch or a bitch. (laughs) And so it's just different language. We are seen, women, we're great negotiators, but we are perceived differently than men when we're negotiating. We often do have to shift our language and we do have to approach things from a relationship perspective more so than men do. And so right, wrong, or indifferent, that's the world in which we live in. And so I do think it's more complicated for women, but I also think that we can be almost better than a lot of men at having these conversations because negotiation conversations are emotional. They're relationship oriented. It's about providing value, but it's also about understanding what the other person wants. And often women have that in spades. So it's just practicing having those money conversations and finding places like the group you're in to really engage in them and just explore this conversation. I know you're much younger than me, but it's really only been since the 70s or 80s that women even talked about earning or making money outside the home. So we haven't had too much practice, but I think we're going to really rock at it once we do. That's a great point, Kathleen. And we're going to stop there and be back in just a minute. The American College of Financial Services is dedicated to providing applied financial knowledge and education, promoting lifelong learning and advocating for ethical standards for the benefit of society. I'm George Nichols III, President and CEO, and I encourage you to listen and subscribe to this and other college podcasts as we continue to expand our horizons in this digital landscape. Remember, no matter what, we are always stronger together. Visit theamericancollege.edu to learn how you can be part of the change we're building. Give your clients the retirement security they need with our Retirement Income Certified Professional designation. Visit theamericancollege.edu slash RICP to learn more. I hope there are still men listening to this conversation and hearing this because I know for the men who have joined this group and hear us talk about, you know, making money like a woman and wanting to make more money, right? Is the other part of our group supporting other women and making more money, whatever that is, right? Training just the support to negotiate for a higher salary or the support to believe that they are worth more and get rid of those limiting beliefs that they have. But the men that hear this, I think are often surprised and they sort of give this like, well, 
just go ask for more money, right? Like just go do the, you know, that thing that I do. And it's, it's helpful, I guess, in some ways it's empowering is what we'll call it. And men, we need you to do that for women too, but it's not that simple. I don't think Kathleen. No, it isn't simple. And I was giggling a little bit because I, I do think that a lot of men out there can be great allies. One of the things that I encourage people to do is to find female mentors and groups like you're talking about, but also to find male allies. Some of the best negotiation training I've gotten from my husband, Brian. And some of it is that just go do it. But part of it is also learning different strategies. And so the first time I ever negotiated anything, because I was raised, you don't do that. It's not polite. You know, take what you are given. You're happy to have a job. And we were negotiating for a dining room table early on in our marriage. And I walked in and I said, I really want that table, but I don't want to pay that price. And he, then he coached me in negotiation and we had some fun with it, which I didn't even know negotiation could be fun. And so we ended up getting the table at a ridiculously low rate, but it was the first time that I participated in negotiation and it was with a male ally. So I really think that we need to incorporate men in this conversation, but it is different. And we also need to realize that not every man, even if he's in financial services, is really good at this either. Mm. You know, that there is a myth that somehow men are really great at these conversations and women aren't. And that's just way too black and white. It's complicated for a lot of us. We're negotiating our worth, our services. And that is the most personal conversation. Yeah, it's very sensitive. I know with the college has a center for women in financial services, and this has been a topic of discussion, helping our male counterparts be really good allies, because there are a lot of them that want to be good allies and aren't sure what they should do to be helpful, right? And I, I know Chris Voss, I've done a training on negotiation with him. It's so interesting. And there's, you know, the part, I think, in the beginning of the mentality of this is not a conflict. A negotiation is not you against me. It is both of us on the same side of the table trying to come to a solution, right? And when you think about it that way, it can change some of that psychology. So as a wrap up to this discussion for negotiating for women, Kathleen, I want to give our male counterparts a little something here. What are some ways, and you talk about your husband and, and what he did for you, what are some ways that our male counterparts in this industry can be good allies for women? Well, I think first and foremost, they can make sure that they're hiring women, that they are sponsoring women and giving them challenging assignments, and also being open to the idea of engaging in a money conversation with them. I'm thinking peer-to-peer, you know, mentee, mentor, really engaging in a conversation of what are salary negotiations like for you? And, you know, I may not be the best at it, but let, you know, let's talk about it. Let's role play it. Let's, let me support you. I think if you just ask, how can I support you? Most professional women will have an answer for that. So you don't have to show up with all the answers. You just have to be willing to really support women through your actions, but also engage in these conversations because you can learn a lot from a a female advisor as well in, in how to do this. I love it. Yeah. I know I've had male examples or mentors in my life who have done this with me. And I think about, I'll give a shout out to Aaron Jung, who's an advisor, who's been a great mentor to me, but I wanted to negotiate for a higher salary and some different responsibilities. And Aaron said, well, let's put a plan together, right? Let's talk about why you think that that would be worth that and list that out. And there was a formal report that I presented, you know, with his help to make sure that that happened. So as men in our industry have a lot of power, I think to help other women and and use that power for good. The example you just gave is really great because the other thing that needs to happen in a negotiation is people need to realize that this is a business conversation, that it's not about how you feel. Feelings are okay to have, they're okay to work through, they're okay to understand, but it's really about how are you going to contribute to the business? You know, how is an increased salary, or if you're, you know, talking with clients, how is an increased fee to a client going to provide value and how do you show that value? So having a plan, having something concrete is a really important piece. And I do think that finding a mentor or coach or someone who can talk you through those pieces and role play it is really key. I agree. Yeah. So for our male allies, please take that message. We need your help. And Kathleen, for the folks that are listening to this, how can they find more resources from you? 
Sure. I'm excited to let you know that I have a new online course called Breaking Money Silence on Negotiating, and it is positioned for women in business. So some of your clients out there, or if you are a financial advisor, you're in a business and you want to go to breakingmoneysilence.com backslash negotiating, and you can check out that course. I also have a special offer for advisors who might want to gift that course to clients. And so you just want to contact me via the website and we can talk about what your needs are. But I'm excited to kind of offer this resource. No, it's so awesome. So Kathleen, thank you for sharing your knowledge and that resource. Go check her out. And thanks for being here with us today, Kathleen. Thank you, Alana. It was great breaking money silence with you. For more episodes, visit our website at theamericancollege.edu slash podcasts. This has been Next Gen in 10, brought to you by the American College of Financial Services.